Hi, Pallavi. Hi, Tarun. Thank you for joining us. Uh, could you, let's start with you telling us a little bit about your personal and professional background. That's okay. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I am the founder and CEO at Go Stops. Go Stops is a chain of backpacker hostels. I started this journey about nine years ago. Prior to that, uh, I worked for about 10 years in consumer behavior research as a qualitative research professional across organizations like Tata Capital, uh, Milward Brown, Quantum uh, Market Solutions. So that's been my background. Um, prior to that, I've done my education in uh, economics. I'm an economics and honors graduate. And post that, I've done my MBA in marketing. So that's about my professional background. Okay. And where were you born and raised? I was born in Delhi, but raised in Haridwar. Oh, so lovely childhood. Okay. Calm and serene, I would say. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So you went through the Adios program. Uh, when was that? Do you remember? About a year ago. About, about 2022. Mid-2022. Okay, so could you walk us through the journey slowly, step by step, starting from before the program, when you, when we first spoke and we got to know about it, were there any expectations, apprehensions, any personality uh, uh, characteristics or what was the thought process before and how did it progress week on week? Um, I think... Uh... Tarun, when we approached you, we approached you for your ESOPs program. And I wasn't aware of Adios at all. Uh, and uh, so we went along with it. Uh, but I can, I could see a remarkable difference setting in uh, right from week three of the program. Uh, I was, I, I, I'm basically a person who's restless and who likes to get things done quickly. I have... Uh, 20 things on my plate that I feel obligated. I used to feel obligated to clear yeah. out uh, immediately. Um, I used to feel like that is what is expected out of me. Um, so to have a program structured around sitting with your thoughts and contemplating about the issues that you're uh, dealing with in life sounded like a bit of a stretch to me in the beginning. And uh, so, you know, I approached the program with mixed emotions. Uh, because like I said, um, I have, I was always a person who was on the move trying to solve everything and feeling very happy about it. If anybody's seen the movie, uh, intern, the intern, um, it's like, I, I sort of idealized that founder who's like on her skateboard and just zooming across office and trying to solve everything left, right, center, doesn't need a moment to reflect. Mm -hmm. You know, I idealized that kind of a persona. So this was in a complete contradiction to what I believed in. Uh, but I went along with it because it was an interesting program. In the beginning, I looked at it just as an interesting program. Um, uh, some of the things that uh, started, you know, getting me more and more interested was the structure with which we approached the program in terms of listing down uh, what our personal goals were, objectives were, what our value systems were, uh, what is it? that I'm doing today and why am I doing it? What motivates me? I think that made me reflect a little bit and I think I liked it. And because you had made us sit down for an hour every weekend and given us homework, so it made it almost impossible to escape it. And when I did that, I think I, um, I got a set of guidelines for myself uh, that I could fall back on in the case of a dilemma. I think that's the first time I realized the uh, power of just reflecting and uh, setting certain north stars or goalposts in your life because uh, it's I realized for the first time that it's easier to uh, deconstruct your decisions and go back to those goalposts just in case you're confused uh, so that, I think that started helping me from week three onwards um, okay. and uh, sort of even with the audio uh, 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 principles in terms of the various uh, 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 tools that are available to us. Uh, when you think about whether it, what is it right, wrong, 
what should you do next? What should you do next? It just helped me make my decision making process a little longer. One of the things that I realized was during the course of this program was that I do not have to give a solution right away. Um, something that was I was completely tuned to before the program that I must give a solution right away. And that is my job. Mm -hmm. I realized that it, there is no need to do that. Uh, you should take your time. You should mull over it. Something that I wasn't used to doing, mulling over anything. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, you should mull over it and uh, weigh the, you know, link it back to what drives you and what your goals are uh, and what your values are. Um, and I think that really helped me. And I started looking for more moments wherein I could just sit back and think about the problems or the issues at hand rather than, you know, uh, run from meeting to meeting and try to resolve everything in a single day. So I think there was a change. And then I started looking for tools and started looking for ways and means to contemplate a little more. Mm -hmm. um, initially, Tarun, if you remember, my contemplation time was just the drive time from home to office. Yeah. Uh, then I started looking for the contemplating corner in my home nice. uh, when I wanted to get a recliner and think and contemplate and jot down my thoughts uh, with a cup of coffee um so i i didn't get a recliner but i have a thinking chair okay. uh, i spend uh, a lot of time on it uh with a coffee or with a drink both <laughs> <laughs> so so that i can think through some of the things um i uh, started taking contemplating retreats uh which is essentially retreats that I take on my own. Uh, there is nobody accompanying me so that I can spend time with myself. These could be six days to 10 days, usually taken in places which are uh, uh, not big cities, doesn't have a restaurant or friends to catch up with. Mm. Typically a village, uh, rather unknown hotel uh, okay. with great food because food is obviously something that I love. Okay. So, uh, so that I can spend time with myself and the thoughts a lot of uh, strategy documents that we currently refer to come out of these retreats. Oh, I, uh, uh, I also go back and talk to my co-founder and my co-team after that and I have ideas to bounce off. Otherwise, you know, because I think there has to be something to start with. Mm -hmm. If I have an idea only then I can, you know, sort of discuss it and uh, make it into something or fructify it. Mm -hmm. So I think these retreats just help to come up with certain thoughts and ideas, which then the uh, core team sort of works on and actions. And I think there has been substantial development as a result of that over the last few months. So had um, you done these kind of, uh, any getaways in the past? Alone, never, no. Yeah. I am a, a person who's tr constantly trying to get away from the city. And that's something that has been with me, uh, something that's true about me from the very beginning. So typically we wanted to take a break every month or once in two months, just for a couple of days, just to head out. Yeah. Uh, uh, Punk, my co-founder and my husband, we call it chl chlorophyll breaks so that we can just get into the, in, in the middle of some nature with lots of nice. trees around us. Uh, something that you can't do really too much in Delhi, even though it's yeah. pretty green in certain portions, but I think it's just because you, you can't really go and live there for a night or two nights. Right. So, <laughs> Um, but not retreats. Mm. Uh, retreats I started only after uh, the contemplation work that we did with you. Uh, and definitely not alone. So it's been okay. a big shift for me. So any instances that come to mind where you were able to specifically apply what you thought about in your personal or uh, in your startup? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. See, as a we are a young startup so i i still fail to draw the line between personal and professional <laughs> most of my instances most of the instances i can share with you are uh, 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 in the professional front um so for example one of the earliest things while our course was still going on mm -hmm. um uh i remember there was a tough deal uh that we were negotiating uh for with one of the landlords and uh, it wasn't going as per planned in the sense that I wasn't. Uh, uh, so we had landed at that place uh, for signing the final agreement. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is a, a deal that I was trying to sign in Shimla. And this is a property for your hostel, is it? Yes, yes. It's a property for our hostel. It would have been a stellar hostel, one of the largest hostels that we have. Actually, the largest that we would have built uh, at that point in time. And uh, great building fit in all forms for a great hostel. Um, so I'd already traveled to Shimla, landed there. And uh, we were supposed to meet up and sign the document. And uh, the, the landlord didn't show up on time. Then uh, even after two hours, the landlord you know, kept saying that this is going wrong, that is going wrong. Uh, we were still the next day negotiating on various points, which were very, very small points that we had already ironed out earlier. Okay. Um, so I just, I just took a you know moment. I said that let's not connect today. Let's just spend some time with ourselves. Uh, let's connect in the evening or tomorrow morning. And I went back and I sat down uh, on my balcony. Um, I thought about everything that was going on, and I just wanted to. Uh, and I wanted to just tie it back to whether this is something that I want to deal with in the long run. So today I know that I really want this property. Mm -hmm. It's going to be stellar. But at what cost? You know, uh, do we want to work with somebody who's going to go back on points that have already been ironed out? How mm -hmm. will it pan out over the course of the next 15 years that we are going to execute this deal? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of pressure would it put on, on the team? Uh, is this something that ties back to how we want to lead our lives. Uh, is this the kind of uh, um, everyday batting that we want to do because it was a large stake deal? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I sat back, I thought about it. I linked it back to, is this why I'm doing this business? The answer was no. And uh, which is something that I picked up from your, uh, uh, from the audience material only. And the answer was no. And uh, I uh, then called up uh, the people who were traveling with me to understand if I'm overthinking this or did they feel the same things about the landlord and the fact that he's been a bit uh, uh, all over the place and uh, uh, yo-yoing between the terms mm -hmm. of the contract. They said that they felt the same way. Then I called my co-founder up. I described the situation. He's like, you're right, just... If it doesn't tie back to what we believe in, let's just walk out. We'll find a better property. Maybe it'll take two years, three years, four years. Mm -hmm. I know Shimla is a critical market for you. But don't get into a deal where you don't get the right vibes from the uh, landlord because it's going to be a difficult one to carry through otherwise for the next 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's how next morning I called up the landlord and I said, we are not going to sign the deal. And we walked out of it. So okay. that was one of the first. Uh, so let's let's dig in before we go to the next one. Uh, there are some key points that you made. One, that this was the largest for you. So this was not one more hostel. No, no, no. So, so one. can we now go down to a 30 feet view as if we are in the room? What are you feeling? Because we talk about the twin voices in the program. Now, these are voices definitely that exist. One of the voices is telling you, this is the largest, this is a feather in the cap, etc, etc, etc. Can you can you remember what was happening in the mind and people around you maybe was there pressure? What was happening? Um, yeah, so obviously, I really wanted to sign the deal. Like I said, I really liked the property. And I think the property was quite well suited to be a hostel, mm -hmm. uh, more than a hotel, you know, you look at certain properties, and they just say, this should not be a hotel. This should be a hostel. Okay. It was one of those. And it would have been a 250 bed hostel. We still don't have that. And it would have been in Shimla, which would be, have been a, a flagship uh, hostel because at that time, Shimla didn't have a hostel and let alone a 250 bed hostel. Large. In yeah. your case, the largest. Yes. It was a main road property, prime property. Uh, parking was there. Uh, it ticked all the box. It checked all the boxes. You know, you it's very difficult to walk away from a deal like that. Mm. Uh, and there was it ticked the box of valuation, but not values. Yes, not values. Absolutely right, Tarun. It, what was wrong was the uh, and at the other end, I knew that I have traveled from Delhi to here. 
the person is a lookalike. We have mm. ironed out 20 points over the last 20 days. You're mm. still picking those points up. Mm. Uh, you're, you're, you have to be serious about this deal because these are all reflections. You can't really know the person in detail before you sign a deal, right? Mm. Uh, because it's not like you spend a lot of time with your landlords or your franchisee partners. Mm. You, you sign it and then you get to know of them, right? So, But you pick on everything that is happening around you before you sign the deal. Mm. So if if I can make all that journey, why can't you just get the property cleaned and the locks removed so that we can evaluate all the rooms properly and make a list, you know, because that's going to get go, get into the in the contract as an addendum, um, which is what are the assets and what is it that we're going to add? What is it that they're going to add? So just the discipline of it all uh, was completely lacking. And um, so there was the property dealers with me who really wanted me to sign it because this was a large check. Uh, mm. They would have got um, a fair amount of uh, brokerage for it. Um, and uh, they weren't able to understand why at the last minute when we had already done everything, we were supposed to go to the court mm. in days and sign it. Why are we, why am I having second thoughts? Mm. And the only reason I was having second thoughts is because Ultimately, the property is what it is. It's a physical asset. Mm. But the day-to-day -day interaction is with the people of the property. Mm. And in order to execute anything peacefully, you need to have the right partners. Mm. So that that is what was going on in my head. Really great property, but 15 mm. years of torture for what? Mm. Okay. So you jilted him at the altar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you can say that. <laughs> okay, uh, then what happened? Anything else comes to mind? Um, I think uh, so. Very early on, again, um, I think uh, there was there was a situation wherein uh, uh, we were, you know, supposed to raise a round of funding. Uh, not around. We were one of the investors that we were reaching out to, you know, uh, and we were in need of funds uh, uh, at that point in time. And, uh, you know, at that point, but this investor was more of a strategic nature. Uh, so at that time, it was very uh, critical for me to sort of understand what are we building this for? What stage of the business is the company at? Should we be looking at strategic investment today or not? As a young startup, you don't understand these things, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but obviously I knew that we had to, because we were so young, we're still so young as a startup that we had to get the chance to uh, do our thing, make our mistakes, learn from it, uh, reinvent and get on because it's a completely new industry segment, which is backpack hostel. So there aren't too many learnings that I can borrow from the, industry uh presently uh so uh we also went back thought about it can we do a strategic raise at this moment can we should we be doing that at all and the answer was just this that we need scope to learn we need scope to make mistakes uh and that's how we can grow go stops so, so this would have meant someone else overseeing you a lot more is that what yes. this would have meant yes yes could have meant we don't know Okay. Would have meant. But you had signs. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how usually a strategic investment would pan out. Mm. Could be. Or it could pan out the other way as well. But yeah, so. But you heard on the side of caution. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Anything relating to hiring, letting people go? Or I think you also mentioned um, some rental example last time we spoke where you actually raised it or something right 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 so yeah so there was another instance where i was uh, struggling to figure out there was a, a rental renegotiation that was supposed to happen because we had run out the length of the initial contract and we were re-signing the contract mm. and uh, given the fact that we were coming up with a lot of new properties and uh, getting into the market to raise our funds and getting into to the market to uh, launch our app and all of that. So it was a bit difficult for me to sit down and decide on what should be done in terms of the next rental for this particular property. Um, 
so i was just it it was one of those days when um i was contemplating i i don't think it was i think it was sitting in a park and uh, thinking it through um and it just came to me that uh, i was supposed to increase the rent to a certain amount uh, because it was coming for a, a renewal uh, and at the same time reduce the escalation per month uh, per year uh, from 7.5% to 5% because that was really high uh, so i i decided to come up with uh, so i just realized that this is what i can do that i can increase the rent uh, right now with the new contract and uh, reduce the per year escalation so that there is a win win situation for both of us okay. uh, in fact what that allowed me to do is give my landlord greater returns in the initial period okay and uh, reduce the escalation year on year in the subsequent years so it panned out as a win win situation uh, my landlord was really happy with that solution uh, because there was immediate cash to be made for the first 2 3 years hmm. and while i lose less over a longer period of time of 5 years Okay. So, uh, I think it worked for, and I think just sitting back and reflecting often helps you come up with win-win situations, win-win solutions. Because usually people look at it as a zero, uh, zero-sum game. I don't think there is something called a zero-sum game. If you put your mind to it, you will be able to come up with creative solutions wherein everybody walks out happy of that deal. Um, and I think, yeah, contemplation really helps in doing that. So you mentioned the park. Uh, is that also something you do often? Yes, especially during the winters. Okay. So I usually tend to. Uh, I'm I'm a person who loves the sun. Uh, so uh, I'm a Leo, uh, and I think uh, I it took that to an extreme with my <laughs> personality traits. Uh, and I love the sun. I love basking in the sun. Um, so winters. and sun is i i don't like the cold but i love winters because i can spend time in the sun <laughs> so uh i often go to the uh, to a park on the weekend with my table and chair sit down under it uh, near a tree under the sun work through the day uh, from morning till evening and get gets a lot sorted uh gets a lot done uh on that day while i enjoy my time in the sun so nice. that's what happened with me i was just sitting through Uh, i was sitting in the park thinking through some of the things and that's when i it occurred to me that it doesn't have to be a, a zero sum game it has to be a win win solution and that's how you do it hmm. and i think you gave him more than what was yes yes in the that, initial period yes that's what you did hmm. yes the more than what he expected yes hmm. wonderful so from what i hear is what you're saying is you do short contemplation retreats which are like weekly things in the park which has a mix of working and thinking yes and then you do these long 6 7 day thing where you go away to a remote place and actually think deeply that's, that's a kind right. of a mix that you do that's right that's right so when you were describing yourself in the beginning all operations all decisions to be taken i was basically thinking you are essentially defining a founder so you yourself are a founder and you have been through these high energy intense moments where you want to keep running because you feel that is the best way the most productive way you feel also very fulfilled but after having seen the other side what would you say to other founders who are right now on the treadmill and they don't want to get off even for a minute because they think that slowing down is actually somehow bad for them i think uh, one thing that i can say or share with any founder who's in a similar situation high stress situations too many things to tackle everything needs to be resolved quickly i, I think that is never going to go away uh, i think that's always going to stay but one thing that i've learned because of uh, uh, the adios program is that you don't have to solve everything today um you you should reflect you should link it back to everything that is important to you in life if the answer is not very obvious and uh, uh 
and link it back to why you're doing what you're doing, uh, especially when it comes to difficult decisions to be made. Um, and take the time to figure this out. Uh, if you don't, if supposedly today is Monday and a problem has come to your notice or an issue has come to your notice, if it can be avoided, don't try to solve it on Monday. Try to solve it on Wednesday. Give yourself that time because in between your work day, when you sit down and reflect on the key issues of the day, you will be able to listen to yourself a lot more when you're just thinking and, you know, just, just thinking. Yeah. Uh, so I think that is one major change that happened to me. And I would suggest that don't try to give an answer right away. Just give yourself some time, especially with a difficult situation. Don't be, uh, uh, tell your team, let me get back to you tomorrow. Or tell your team, even after that, you can tell your team, you know, I need one more day. All hell is not going to break loose. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, excuses, yeah, no. yeah. So I think take that time if it's possible, because in between everything else that you're doing, uh, if you make it a practice, you will find the time to sit back and reflect on these critical issues. And like I said, find a win-win situation. It doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. Okay. So before we close, why don't you tell us about the passion you have for Go Stops and your mission and Go Stops? So I started Go Stops because uh, I didn't have a Go Stops when I was growing up. So okay. uh, I, yeah, I've been an avid traveler, thanks to my parents. And after that, when I... Uh, uh, got into college and I started traveling independently. I became completely dependent on my friends uh, to form a big group and travel together uh, because public transport at that time was a bit of a rarity uh, in terms of buses and Volvos and things like that. So mm -hmm. we used to take a cab. So we need at least minimum of six, seven people uh, to get into an Innova uh, or a Tempo Traveler, 10 people. So you need a larger group to plan this out. Then to get a good hotel, uh, you needed a bunch of people so that you can divide the per night fare of that hotel between three or four people. So uh, my um, trips became, you know, not as frequent as I would have liked them to be only because at that time I only used to get a pocket money from home. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I would travel as often as my friends could and I was de dependent on them. Uh, when I went to Europe in 2011, I came across uh, backpacker hostels for the first time. And I realized this was the answer. I think this was a solution I needed all along, which is the ability to just pick up your bag and hit the road um, without waiting for anybody else. Because where you're going, you're also going to find similar like-minded young travelers. Mm -hmm. And that would have solved a lot for me in terms of just exploring the country uh, when I was much younger rather than waiting for the later years when you are more uh, when you're financially more stable so you don't need money to explore the country you just need uh, infrastructure to be able to hit the road and explore the country it doesn't have to cost too much so with that thought i started go stops because i wanted uh, young indian travelers to be able to explore as much of the country as they can on a budget which means that uh, and with like minded people so they also meet, make friends while they're traveling it's not just about uh, the destination but it's also how you explore the destination with like-minded individuals so you don't have to wait for your friends to make a plan you can go alone or just a couple of you and make friends there um, also because it is on a budget uh, typically our uh, dorm beds are available at 600 700 rupees per night mm -hmm. uh, so if it's a weekend to Manali it's, the Volvo just cost you 800 bucks mm -hmm. 700 rupees for the stay another thousand rupees for the food. So within about 2,500, 3,000 rupees, you've spent a great weekend exploring a new destination and making new friends as against spending that money over a movie or a drink in, in a metro like Delhi. Uh, mm -hmm. So far more fulfilling that way. Um, so yeah, I and that allows you to, because it's on a budget, it allows you to travel a lot more and discover a lot more. And I think that also helps you discover yourself as an individual because when you put yourself through uh, different situations and new re new situations meet new people it opens up your mind and helps you discover who you are as well okay wonderful and you are clearly very passionate about it that i know personally <laughs> thank you so much uh, for uh, doing this Pallavi. thank you so much for your time thanks Tarun. thank you so much thanks you thank you thanks i'll see you soon bye